Welcome to the next installment of If It's In The Mind, It Can Be Managed, part of our Priority Mind Management podcast and series, bringing in some of our coaches uh, and some friends of the, of, of the coaches, getting out the message of how we can enjoy and help people with mindset, mental health, mind management, and mental performance. It's about making sure that everybody works on this first and everything else will follow. I think so. We're going to talk about this. Uh, Anthony, and I'm extremely excited to have you on. Uh, I'm Cody Cudworth, the host of this uh, podcast video series for you. However, let's welcome to our introduce yourself to our guest number two. Hi, Cuddy. Yeah, my name's Anthony. I am a uh, retired police officer, uh, currently working in safeguarding in professional sports, and that's something I've done for the last two years. And obviously, we're here today to talk about something that I have a passion for, and that's mental performance coaching absolutely we love this now we had a little chat before that the podcast started um and we were talking about yep there's so many similarities especially when it comes to mental performance because i've been working with some um sporting athletes on their mental performance um and it's such a phenomenal tool to be able to help people to get that right and the rest will follow so tell talk to me about before we get onto the red to the blue let's talk to me a little bit more about yourself anthony uh, ex-police officer tell me about some of the things that you went through when you were a police officer okay so i retired from the police in 2021 mm -hmm. and i spent 20 years working in london within metropolitan police now the last 13 years i was in what they call vulnerability policing mm -hmm. so i went stopped off in domestic violence i then went to work for uh, child abuse investigation child exploitation historic sexual offenses so the real awful side of policing so th this was as a detective dealing with you know extremely unpleasant characters dealing with very vulnerable victims uh, in a very sensitive way uh, and people that had suffered you know huge trauma over the years from one way or another at, at the hands of, of perpetrators so i did that for 13 years uh after 13 years i was ready to come out i, I think i pretty much taken as, as much as i could but i came out and during the latter part of my career, I was I became a, a blue light champion within the police. So mm -hmm. mental health, uh, the effects of mental health on both my victims and my colleagues was something I was starting to get a bit of a passion in. So I, I became a blue light champion. I became a mental health first aider. And using those skills, I could then work with, work with my victims and I could work with my colleagues. So anybody suffering trauma, you know, I, I was a sort of a a person there that they could come to and I could help and I could advise and I could signpost. And really you were, a, you know, you were a shoulder. You were somebody yeah. that you could, they could talk to. So uh, I did that for the last couple of years of my time in the police. Mm -hmm. And then when I left, I had a, a great passion for sport. I, I'd worked as a volunteer for various sports organizations. So when I came out, I combined my passion for sport, my investigative skills, and a little bit of the sort of the mental health and mental performance. And I went to work in, in professional sport. And I've sort of bounced around a few sports, but I'm now working for Basketball England as a full-time safeguarding officer, also leading on their mental health and well-being support package. Absolutely fantastic. Now, yeah. why did you become such a champion? And explain what the blue light champion is, because even I'm like, what's a blue light champion? What's <laughs> a blue light champion? Okay, so, so blue light champions are mental health advisors within the emergency services, hence the, hence the blue light. So we would be trained by MIND. Uh, MIND would uh, give you the necessary skills, tactics, tools to help people that were suffering. Obviously, frontline policing is, is a very sort of strenuous time or frontline, anything within emergency services. So we were trained officers. We were still full-time police officers, but we, we held this, this MIND qualification that if any of our colleagues were, were suffering, in, in, in any way, they had a, a blue light directory they could go to. So they knew who these officers were within their stations, within their units, within, within their, you know, their sort of specialized areas. They could come to you and say, hey, Anthony, I've got this problem. Can I talk to you about this? Not necessarily job based. It could be anything. It could be problems at home, 
relationship problems. And we, we weren't counsellors, we weren't specialists. However, we had the ability to listen yeah. and to signpost. Yeah. And talk to me about, if you've seen all that yourself, Anthony, if you don't mind my asking, and I know before we went into this, I said, is there any questions I'm not allowed to ask? And you said, no, I can ask anything. So I might, I'm going to ask a question that, that will come from far field for you. How did you cope with seeing all those those, those traumas? And because I've 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 got friends who are police officers, and they they always told me about the the horror stories that they had to see. So how did you deal with it personally, Anthony? Did you always have the tools to get through it? I, I think I I went in as a thirty five year old when I joined, so I had an awful lot of life experience when I went into the job. Mm. I'd never experienced some of the sort of the the awful things that I saw, but I went in with. And there was a preconceived idea that I was going to see horrific things. So I'd already built up this sort of defense mechanism in myself, knowing that I was going to be facing horrific things from life experience. It still doesn't prepare you for what you, you do see, you know, delivering a, a message to a relative that their loved one has passed away in a car accident. You know, you've dealt with a car accident and you've then got to deliver this message to, to their loved ones. Horrific, you know, dealing with a, a road traffic collision where people have passed away and, and you're dealing with it on scene. I was also one of the first officers on scene for the July bombings in 2005 in, in wow. central London. I was the first officer on scene at Edgware Road. And, and again, that was horrific, being on the train, stepping over bodies, essentially. Uh, but you had to get survivors off the train and out to safety. So you saw some horrific things. And I think you just learn to to cope, but I think later on in life it started to affect me and personal problems in my own life meant that I think everything sort of came on top of me and, and I became I became my best my own best client, if you like. Perfect. Tell me about that. What did you go through yourself, Anthony? <laughs> okay. So my and again, it's sort of a personal thing, but again, I don't mind sharing it because I think yeah. it, it sort of it, it paints the whole picture. So myself and my partner separated when my son was seven months old right uh and we went through maybe sort of five six years of in and out of court not allowed to see him false accusations all those sorts of things it took a real toll on on me and my family mm -hmm. at the time i was a serving police officer so i'm dealing with my own personal trauma and then mm -hmm. business trauma if you like and mm -hmm. I think things just sort of came on came on top of me. You know, you, you just sort of think, well, where, where do I turn? Where do I turn to? And if I'm having these problems, where other people are having these problems as well. So I think I became thinking, well, hang on, I, I can help me by helping other people. If I've got the necessary skills and and this toolkit, you know, I can become my, my own best client. So so yeah, so really sort of suffering my own personal problems and family problems and my father passed away and never really got to know my own son so there was that playing on my mind and as I say with, with everything else at work suddenly you, you think well hang on what, what do I do now and mm -hmm. you, you sort of back yourself into a corner yeah well thank you for sharing very much appreciated so we're here to talk about mental performance something I'm passionate about especially when I work with my clients in, in the sporting uh, industry um, so I, I wanted to bring you on so we could talk about red to blue and how it works, how you help, and how you coach. So, Anthony, what was it appeal appealed to you about the Red to Blue? Okay, so so, so Red to Blue is a system. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the company behind it is, is Gazing Performance. So I I I have all these mental health uh, qualifications and the, the Blue Light Champion and mental health first aider. Because I was working in professional sport, I was torn as to sort of which area I was going to go down and. and wasn't going to go down the mental health support route for, mm -hmm. for athletes, but I had more of a passion for the mental performance side yep. of things. So I wanted to help athletes become the best version of themselves. What could they do to become better athletes in, in whatever you, so I, I started off in motor racing. I then worked in athletics. I worked in skiing and, and now within basketball, but the, the concept is the same, you know, an athlete to become the best version of themselves they need the, the skills to cope. And I, and I sort of looked around and I even went across to the US uh, to, to work with a couple of mental performance coaches over there because the US get it. Uh, mental performance coaching of athletes in the US is huge. It starts at high school. 
mm-hmm. mental performance coaches working with with high school kids, you know, full time. They, they've got a place as as a tutor would do. Over here, unless you're working for the Manchester United's, the Chelsea's, the Manchester City's, Formula One racing teams, here, I think we sort of play at mental performance within athletes. Yeah. My my son's an under eighteen. Uh, Football player, soccer player for, for those listening in, in, in the year. <laughs> so he's 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 never had a mental performance coach, you know, and he's played he's played football since he was 12, 12 years old. Never dream, you know, his coaches never think of, of of introducing mental performance to athletes. So I came back from the States, I thought, well, they do it really well. What what can we do? The US is great but I didn't think their system would work with UK athletes. Not yet. We're, we're, not, we're not ready for that just yet. So I looked around in the UK and I thought, well, there must be somebody that can give me the edge, the training to deliver this, this mental performance coaching to athletes. I'm not a psychiatrist. A, a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not pretending to be one to the athletes that I work with, but I, what I wanted was the skills to say, I can help you with your, your mental performance coaching. Mm, I looked around. Red to blue is something I'd come across before in a sports course that I'd done a few years ago. So I, I thought, well, this 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 is the one that, that could work for me. Perfect. So talk us through because you've been working with snowboarders, uh, you've been working with footballers. Yep. Um, and talk us through the red blue system and how you've not only used it yourself, but how it increases people's mental performance as well okay so so red to blue is is a very very simple system that really works on mind maps or or maps yep so as i said i'm not a psychologist i'm not a psychiatrist so i i didn't want to be talking about parts of the brain and and how that could be affected what i wanted to do is it was a simple system of presenting it to the athlete whether it be a, a football or a snowboarder or a motor racer so so we help people for, perform under pressure, as I said, get better at what they do. And that's across all sectors, not just sport, we yeah. work with, with, with business, with emergency services. Yeah. The biggest, uh, I think, example of people who use the red to blue is the All Blacks, New Zealand rugby side. Yeah. They've used red to blue. And, and if you research it, they will sort of say how beneficial it's been to them winning two World Cups. The Gurkhas use it as well. They've used the system. So it's... It's a series of maps that let people recognize where they are and the effect on their life that, that pressure is having. Uh, that's the, the, the best way to describe it. So, so we would start with a our initial map. Something we would present a client with would be a, a line. Starts at zero, ends in 100. And we will sort of say to, to the client, well, you know, you place yourself on that particular line wherever you think you are. Guaranteed, most people will go between the 40 and 50 mark percent number, whatever you call it, because that's where they'll say they are. Because if they're speaking to you about mental performance coaching, yeah. there's a reason they're speaking to you. They, they want help or they believe they need help or they're not afraid to, to ask for that help. So they'll, 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 they'll have this line in front of them and they'll, they'll put a little cross next to maybe 45, maybe the 50 mark on there. And you go, well, okay, well, why are you there why are you at that 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 sort of 50 and then they'll tell you well i've you know i, I do this and, and this is why i'm here and, and i think i could do this so i can move move up the line even the the most professional people that are very switched on will never put themselves near the 100 because everybody feels that there is something they can do to improve their performance deal with pressure get better so, so we, we ask people to describe where they think they are on the line. And then we say, well, okay, what can you do now? What can we do for you to help you move along that line? Because pressure is inevitable. If you want to get better, if you want to move from the zero to the 100 or the 45 to the 100, you're going to experience pressure. So what we then do is help them recognize that pressure is inevitable. If you want to get better, you're going to face pressure. The best will in the world, most people want to get better. They want to improve something. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean this to sort of sound harsh, but if I present somebody with a a line and they say, well, I'm at 25, but you know what? I'm happy with my 25. 
I do wonder if can, can you work with that person? I think you probably can. I think you can you can help them move along. But I think you know you you've got to want to help yourself. You know you you've got to recognise that the, the pressure's there, and you put things in place to sort of to sort of help. So we 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 start off with that that one hundred, and we sort of think, well, there's your there's your there's your, there's your fifty, for example. You you're between the zero and hundred. So now we're going to put a triangle. So we move to the next slide, the next map, and, and there's a triangle. So the triangle sits sits on that line, and I call it a, a, a very small jigsaw puzzle. It's a three-piece jigsaw puzzle. So you, it's structure, it's skill set, it's mindset. You've got to get all those three right to move along the line. Mm-hmm. Now, structure, if, if you know, let, let, let's talk about a fo- professional footballer, you know, he... He's got his team behind him. He's got his backroom staff. He's got his nutritionist. He's got his physiotherapist. He's got his he's got his agent. He's got a whole team of people. So that's his, his structure. He's got his skill set. His skill set is turning up for training two three nights a week in the pouring rain. If you're over here, if you're, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're if you're lying on Lionel Messi and you're playing in in, in Paris or Madrid, then you're, you're not turning up in the pouring rain. But you're still turning up to train. You, you're, you're practicing you, your drills, your set pieces. You, you know, playing whatever position you play. Mindset, we say, is equally important. It, it's oh. that third. It's that third piece of the jigsaw. You know, you oh, wouldn't absolutely. You wouldn't dream of sort of turning up to to a game on a Saturday as a professional footballer or Formula One racing driver only, or you shouldn't only having two of those three pieces of jigsaw in place, you know, your structure, your skill set. So we say, well, well, mindset is huge. And without the right mindset, no amount of, of, of structure or skill set is going to move you along. You need those three things to get better. And this is why we, we then sort of to sort of move along to say, well, you know, what, what can you do? What, 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 what can we do with this, this skill? Cause this is, this is what we're working on is, is the mindset is the, is the the mindset side of things. So we have the two heads. And this is where the red to blue comes in. So we have our, our red head and our blue head. Now, pretty much the default position has been in the red, you know, because we're all under pressure. Pressure is not a bad thing because no, pressure also, also gives us that sort of fight or flight. You know, if, yeah. you're, if you're faced in, you know, you're walking through the jungle and you're, you're faced with a, a ferocious man-eating lion, you're in red, but Correct. the red is telling you get out of the bloody way as quickly as That's you can. Monkey you, mind, you, yes, it's the monkey okay? mind, so, absolutely. So, sort of thing. so, so yeah. you're there. So you've got to be, well, I've got to run. So, so that's red. So, so red isn't bad. It, I think it's. Our, I would say it's probably our, our default position. So at one time or another, we're always going to be in that red head. Do you that know why the, the red is there? It keeps. Do you know the red is there for a purpose though? Yeah, survival. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it, it's that sort of fight, fight or flight, you know. Yeah. And that's something that you have in the in the police. You know, you yeah. go back, you, you use it quite a lot. You know, if you're, you know, you're in a situation where you're facing an assailant for whatever it is, you know, you, sometimes you can't always talk yourself out of a situation. Yeah. Sometimes you have to run if the situation is is is, is too strong. And again, that's that's why. So you, so you're in your redhead at that particular time. So redhead isn't something to avoid. However, if you're on a football pitch, on a ski slope, in a racing car, you don't want to be in red because that is a bad play. You know, you need to stop focusing your attention, bringing your mindset back to coping with the pressure. So, again, that's what we do is, is we look at getting people to recognize when they're in the red yeah. and then pulling themselves out of, of, of where they are. So we, we then move on. And I'm skipping through these slides. Imagine that we had slides in front of us. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, so the slide number three would be, we, we call it, or, or I call it, is a bad day at the office. So I would ask you to, Cuddy, you've got up in the morning. It's 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, whatever time you get up. Before you go into your office or sit down to do your podcast or whatever you do, sit with your first client, tell me, Take me through those sort of two to three hours and tell me everything that could go wrong. The worst possible way your day could start. So you've 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 got up, 
your boiler's gone off in the night. You've got no cold water. Not a problem with you because you, you'll be you'll be in the sea and it's freezing cold anyway. So cold, <laughs> I do love a dip. <laughs> yeah, a cold shower to you is not not going to worry you, but it could with some people. It could be the hot water's gone off. You could step out of the bedroom and the kid's been playing with toys uh, in the night. There's that huge piece of Lego at the top of the stairs. You tread on it. It hurts. You go downstairs. You've run out of coffee. Or You're tea. not painting a great picture so far, yes, Anthony. But, but this is but this is what we're saying. This is your this is the the worst case scenario. This is your bad day at the office. You've missed the bus. There's a a train strike. It's raining. So so these are the sorts of things that we say. Well, look, this is it. These are worst case scenarios. You can't avoid a lot of these things. These things are going to put you in the red. Treading on the Lego, missing your bus, the bad weather. Your head's in the red now. Yep. So we then look at three circles. So we take these three circles and you've got your can't control, you can influence, and you can control. So we, we, we take these three circles and we go, right, in that first circle there, put the things that you can't control in that circle. The weather. You can't control the weather. Stick it in that circle. That piece of Lego at the top of the stairs, well, it's there. You can't control it because you're stood on it, but you can influence it. You can get your child to put their toys away at the night. Then they're not, this is not going to be the Lego. You can influence being late in the morning by not hitting the snooze button, you know, and getting up late. Uh, your boilers broke down. You can't, you can't alter that. And then you look at the things that you can control. So what can you control? And what we say is that don't avoid the red things. Don't avoid those things that you can't control shift your focus to the things that you can control don't worry about what's gone off don't worry about the uncontrollables control the controllables with that, with that. <laughs> i love it so so yes yeah, so you see so your bad day at the office has put you under pressure you know you but you've got to understand that learn how to refocus divert your attention from those bad things what we focus on is what we will and create for the rest yeah. of the day yep Re reconnect so and again this, this is not a clinical exercise i think i said a couple of times you know i'm, I'm not a psychologist you know I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist but what i've done is i've invested my time yeah a little bit of money but i've invested my time in studying and go well what what would work for me you yeah. know I, I'm, a, I'm a police officer before a police officer i ran nightclubs for 20 years you know i'm i'm moderately educated in drunk all, people, by by all <laughs> accounts. <laughs> yeah, drunk, yeah. Drunk, drunk people across all fields. So, so yeah. So you know, what what is what system can I deliver to people or coach them that is easy to understand? Which is which is what Red to Blue is. It's it's yeah. a it's a simple system of maps that allow you to to refocus your attention. You know, because because it's just, somebody sort of said it's it's where our attention goes, energy flows. Oh, which absolutely. Which That's I, an old uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony, Rob, uh, Rob, Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins. That's the Tony Robbins. Robbins quote. But I actually think it comes from Napoleon Hill. And going back before that, it will probably be from Socrates or it'll be one of the Greek uh, teaching like Plato. Energy goes where uh, it's everyone quotes it. I don't yeah. think people understand that quote for the rest of the day, but that's what creates the negative mindset that we can often find ourselves in. If we're focusing on something like the Lego piece and we're fucking, we forget to focus on, well, actually it is just a Lego piece. So that's yeah. how we realign the focus. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I, 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 go on there. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. no I, that, yeah, no, that's right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I've sort of used it within uh, teenage soccer players, football players. Yeah. Uh, temper, great temper. When things aren't going their way, they blame everybody but themselves so you know they turn up for training in the rain you know they they've they've worked with their coach you know they've maybe seen the doctor in the week if they've got a niggling injury then they'll step out on the pitch and because they haven't had this sort of mindset training their attention is going where they think it's best place so it'll be the referee makes a bad call there's a bad challenge by an opposing player that's that's taken one of their their colleagues out and that's all they're fixated on then is the bad side of things. We're not sort of saying, well, okay, the referee has made a big decision. And it's difficult. I'm not going to pretend it's easy dealing with a teenage boy on a football pitch who's who's had a call against him because they, they do have this sort of temper. But it's getting them to focus their energy on something else. Forget yeah. the referee's bad call. 
he'll make another one in half an hour and that'll go your way. It yeah. comes down to, are you a blamer or an action taker? And if you're a blamer, you'll blame everybody else for how you're feeling. But if you're an action taker, you'll take back the accountability of your feelings and your emotions and go, I own this. And once you realize you own this, then that takes your control back. That's what it's all about. I love that premise there, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. So Anthony, I've got a question for you. Go ahead. Are you a blamer or an action taker? <laughs> <laughs> I was a blamer. Yeah. Absolutely, I was a blamer. And, and I would say huge part of the population would, would, would come under that. Correct. But I think I'm now an action taker. And it's almost a mission of mine to say, I want to take this nation of blame, you know, blamers. Yeah. And let them become action takers. Uh, yes. and, and I think there's, this is a great system. I think priority mind management is a great system. You know, it's there to educate people. And, that, yep. and, that, and that's what it is. It's not difficult. Nope. This isn't, this isn't rocket scientists, uh, rocket science. It, do you know, I think the reason we've been so successful at priority mind management is it's simple. We've created a simple system of mind management that incorporates people to be able to work on their mindset and mental health. Cause it's all connected. Like you said, it's all connected. And the power of what we do at prior to mind management, when we're working with mental performance, when we're working with, we actually work with employees of companies, but I also work with people's nieces. I work with people because the, the, the process that we have in place is we show you the system of thought process and the emotional outcome that you get from that thought process. Once you break down that chain of thought, and I think what most people don't realize, and it's a really good part to, to share, and I know you'll be fully versed in this, is emotions don't just happen. There has to be a thought. And the thought derived from a belief. It'll be a belief about oneself. It'll be about a belief that something happens into your past. And once you can pull out that little seed, that root, pull it out like you've been to the dentist, pull it out, the rest of it disappears the emotion. So we, we talk about this with our clients, with, our, with, our, with the athletes that we're working with uh, and the companies that we work with. Anxiety doesn't just happen. Stress doesn't just happen. Depression doesn't just happen. They are emotions. And I think there's always this big concept of people not understanding the difference between mental illness, mental health. And we've started using the term, actually, stress, anxiety, and depression are emotions. They're emotions that we all have to feel. You have to feel them. I've felt them in the past. Once we understand, actually, they are emotions that come from a belief. And I think it's an old Eckhart Tolle saying, which was, and I, I always I always love that saying, is that depression will come from looking into the past about something you can't control. Anxiety comes from looking to the future, not knowing an outcome of something you can't control. When we stay present, and it's a skill that we have to practice, we have to practice this, I'm sure... Well, you meditate. It's like meditation. Meditation is a practice. You're not going to be able to meditate the first day you go and do meditation. And it's kind of like training a dog because we've just got a dog. And I'm like, oh, it, it, it does something for three days and it stops doing it because you've got to have that consistency in life. And that's that's where it's all about, especially when it comes to mental performance, is keep re reattaching, reversing yourself in those procedures. So it sounds yeah. like a fascinating uh, system that you have for red to blue. I love that. Yeah, it's 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 great, and I, and I've sort of used it in conjunction with other things as well. And, and there's a gentleman called uh, Trevor Moad, mm -hmm. who uh, sadly sort of passed away last year. Mm -hmm. uh, he set up a company called Limitless Minds, and it's great. Yep. But, but he was a, he was a great exponent of a neutral thinking, yep. which is what you've sort of been talking about there, yep. because neutral thinking is, is is very difficult. You talk about what's happened in the past, whether it be the Lego what the dog did when it shouldn't have done. Yeah. You're thinking about that. And then that sets up the oh God and then how you're thinking. That's the meaning we create, yep. Yeah. And then thinking in the future, you know, positive thinking or positive mental attitude. And that again, is that the right thing? Because you're thinking in the future and it creates, like you say, it's that anxiety. You know, yep. am I going to get the promotion? You know, Correct. am I going to pass am I going to pass the exam? Am, am I going to become a millionaire? I'm going to, you know, am I going to do this? Try and live in the present. You know, new, neutral thinking, and, and it's something that sort of Trevor Trevor talked about, and, and Limitless Minds, which is somebody else that I sort of look to and follow, is spot on. One of the things for, for any of our listeners, and one of the most powerful things that you'll do, and I think it came from Wayne Dwyer. It'll not be a Wayne Dwyer thing because everyone's always somebody. I, I did a quote the other day with somebody, and I said, you know, 
the, the, the seeds we plant right now will take time to grow and germinate. That's the biggest misconception that people have is that if you start doing something today, you expect a result tomorrow. And I'm like, actually, you have to plant the seeds now. And they might not grow till June, July, August. But if you're not planting the seeds now, you'll never get the growth in, in, in July. And someone said, Cuddy, is that your quote? I went, technically, yes, but I'll have probably have heard it from somebody else. But that's the reason we created the, the, the logo for Priority Mind Management was you've got to plant something to let it grow. Yeah. And if you get to the root of the problem, such as the traumas that we've been working with, we coach people, but as long as you get to the root of the problem and you pull that root out, you get to flourish and grow. And it's a powerful tool that we've been using with our clients. So... I love the fact, because what you just said there uh, about Limitless Minds, I've got a feeling that's Wayne Dwyer. And Wayne Dwyer was remove attachment and outcome of what you're going to do. Remove expectation. Just do for the sake of do, and you'll find you'll get further in life. If you have an attachment of an emotion of, if I do this, I'll get the promotion, then you don't get the outcome. You get deflated. You lose motivation. You lose the, the the movement forward. But if you were to remove the attachment of the outcome of of a win or something like that and just did it because you wanted to do it, you would start moving forward more in life. And it's the removement of attachment of the outcome that people struggle with sometimes and don't yeah, see absolutely. that. Yeah, 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 the removal of the attachment of the outcome, be it good or bad. Because a lot of people then go to the negative side, which is, oh, I'm not going to do this because this will happen. Then you've you've attached a negative outcome. So being neutral with your outcomes exactly would help you move forward uh, a, a lot more. Is it easy to do? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> do I still attach uh, uh, an emotion to some things I do? Yes. Do I go, you're doing it again? <laughs> when you get into the, the outcomes, like, ah, remove the outcome, remove the emotional outcome for, for anyone uh, that's listening to this, and you'll realize that you move forward a lot quicker. So that's fantastic. Is there anything else you want to share, Anthony? Because I thought that was amazing, uh, a quick intro to Red to Blue. No, no, that, that, that's fine. No, I mean, I, again, I was, I was pleased to finish off with that neutral thinking because it's something yeah. that we, we, don't, we don't do enough of, you know, nope. because we, we're conditioned to, to have this positive mental attitude well something doesn't go right it knocks you back and then i think that sort of that, that neutral thing is right because we again we, we can't control our thoughts no you know but what we can control is what we do with them yeah and our response to them you know and, and that's anthony how... kind of sounds like you did my mindset course a few years ago <laughs> that's exactly what we talked about <laughs> yes I, yeah i i have to hold my hands up and say that as as part of my my research, yes, Cody, I, I did uh, I did take that. And I think probably one of the first people to do it as well, if I remember right. I, I remember correctly was, yes, you were that. You were my test audience for the, for the mindset, the positive mindset course, yes. And I remember us going through that, especially when it comes to thoughts. People do struggle these days to disengage with their thoughts, and that's what's driving the fear and the the, the upset um, about things that, that go on in the world and in people's lives. So, yeah, no. Anthony, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic. So uh, if anybody wants to get in contact, I will put email details so you can get into contact uh, with Anthony um, about his red to blue system. If you want to uh, incorporate that into your life, as always. Uh, but don't forget, if it's in the mind, it can be managed. Uh, and with all our coaches all over the world, helping uh, businesses and families and everybody with their mindset, their mental performance and mental health, Priority Mind Management is here uh, to help. And I love to see... If it's in the mind, it can be managed. As always, big love from Cuddy. Have a fantastic time and we'll see you on the next podcast.